afternoon. My name is Masao Kitano. Uh, so it, it's my great pleasure and honor to welcome all of you to the fourth international symposium on human survivability, the global energy transformation, a quest for solutions from the perspective of human survivability to be held today and tomorrow at Kyoto University. I'd like to especially express my sincere gratitude and respect for the contributions of the four invited speakers from overseas, Dr. Felix Christian Matthias, Research Coordinator for Energy and Climate at the ECO Institute, Germany, uh, Dr. John Constable, Director at Renewable Energy Foundation, UK, uh, Professor Brian Bad uh, Matheson, Deputy Head in the Strategic Research Center for the Fourth Generation uh, District Heating Technologies and Systems at Alborg University, uh, Denmark, and Dr. Gawen Liu, uh, Managing Director of Nanoglobe Singapore. I'd also like to express my sincere gratitude and respect for the contribution of the three invited Japanese experts from outside of Kyoto University. Professor Keigo Akimoto from the Research Institute of Innovative Technology for the Earth. Mr. Yutaka Kamioka, CEO of Satoyama Energy and Dr. Ryo Tamaki, CTO of Connect Systems. Thank you all for coming to Kyoto University. The Graduate School of Advanced Insti Integrated Study in Human Survivability, GSIS, or Shishukan, has already organized three international symposia since 2013. The first symposium was held in March 2013 with the participation of UN representatives and executives from leading international organizations. The major objective of the first symposium was to identify the skills and ethics essential for future global leaders to deal with difficult global issues such as environmental degradation, economic crises, natural and anthropogenic disasters, terrorism, gender and poverty issues. The first symposium also aimed to establish an international collaboration framework to share knowledge and experiences about educating future global leaders. Both the second and third symposiums were held in 2014 with the goal to expand the international collaboration framework network by invited leading experts from Harvard University, UNESCO, UNEP, OECD, and FAO, as well as NGO representatives. This year's symposium will focus on energy and more specifically on transformation to sustainable sources of energy. Another goal of this year's symposium, symposium to help uh, develop a holistic and transdisciplinary perspective on global issues that we have called human survivability studies. In spite of the existence of a wide consensus on the global transformation to sustainable energy, there are still many questions that need to be answered. For example, that what should be the speed of and tolerable cost of that transformation? There is a great deal of discussion centered on tipping points, threshold, and planetary boundaries. These require urgent action that has to start today, but from the start, we, have to, we should have a clear vision of where we'd like to go or where we'd like to be after 20 or 30 years and what specific change we'd like to 
we would like the global energy transformation to involve. Kyoto is well known around the world as a Japan, Japanese city where the Kyoto Protocol was signed. However, it is also an important city for global water issues. Some of you may have attended the Second World Water Forum in Degu this uh, April. Looking back to the beginning of the century, the Third World Water Forum was held in Kyoto together with Shiga and Osaka in 2003 when the global water security was widely discussed. Now please allow me to say a few words about Kyoto University. Uh, since its foundation in 1897, uh, Kyoto University has worked to cultivate academic freedom under a spirit of self-reliance and self-respect and to open up new horizons in creative scholarly endeavors. The university has also sought to contribute to a peaceful coexistence across the global community. The university was established to promote science and technology independent from the central government. Our academic staff is deeply imbued with the rich cultural heritage of Kyoto City. As you may know, Kyoto City and its surrounding areas, including Uji City, have 17 world cultural heritage, heritage sites, as well as many other historic sites, such as very ancient temples and shrines, including famous Golden Pavilion. One reason for this rich heritage is that Kyoto was the capital of Japan for over a thousand years from 794 to 1868, after which the capital moved to Tokyo during Meiji Restoration. Kyoto University's involvement in the region uh, which uh, cultural Meiyu is no doubt one factor in our ability to produce scholars of an exceptional standard, including nine Nobel laureates in science and technology field. Among them, seven graduated from Kyoto University Two of them are a professor and uh, emeritus professor of Kyoto University. The first of our scholars to win the Nobel Prize was Professor Hideki Yukawa, who won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1949. He was, in fact, Japan's very first Nobel laureate. In October uh, 2012, uh, Professor Shinya Yamanaka was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Last year, Professor Isamu Akazaki, who graduated from our Faculty of Science, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics, together with other two other Japanese laureates. Currently, Kyoto University has 10 faculties and 17 graduate schools, as well as se several research institutes and centers. There are also num a number of other facilities, such as libraries, a museum, experimental forest and fields, nuclear facility, and university hospital. We currently have an enrollment of about uh, 13,000 undergraduate students, including 200 international students, and 9,000 graduate students, of whom 1,200 are international. Of our graduate student, 4,800 are master student, 3,700 are PhD student, and 700 are enrolled in the Graduate School of Management and Government. We employ 2,800 academic staff members, including full associate and assistant professors, and 2,600 non-academic staff members it is through the combined effort of all of our students, faculty, and staff that we are able to operate as one of the world-leading <coughs> universities and contribute to international society through our research, education, social outreach, and medical sciences. 
Building on its academic heritage and traditions, Kyoto University is focusing on extending our educational framework through the establishment of graduate school for advanced integrated study in human survivability and, and a new uh, integrated facility for international, gra international graduate study here at uh, Higashi Chijo Building. Kyoto University is also promoting the Kyoto Academy Initiative to integrate civic education with higher education, creating citizens campus out of the city. We have an excellent collaboration with several UN agencies, especially with UNESCO since 2012. <coughs> I would like to end my welcome speech by wishing all participants very interesting and stimulating discussion during the symposium today and tomorrow. I sincerely hope that a fourth international symposium on human survivability will provide a valuable contribution to both the global transformation to sustainable energy and the development of human survivability studies. Thank you very much.